So we're going to start by sharing my screen, and you can see where um, where to find the Wyo Cloud information. And I do you want to run the mouse on? Sure. So they now get to see that. Yep. Not so yes, everybody can <laughs> see. Yeah, everybody. What you see is the um, the Wyo Web um, page that we we are on that has all of the employee self service and Wyo Cloud information. Well, maybe I should just confirm that is what you see, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So the main page that you come in off of is this page right here. Mm -hmm. To get to Wild Cloud, you click on the Wild Web, and then you'll see a whole bunch of options. But what we're really looking for is Wild Cloud Financial Management, and I'll prob probably log in. Yeah. Okay. I imagine you can do different things than I can. So if you guys want to be logging in, you can certainly do that and follow along. If not, just um, follow along. So that brings up the main page, which tells you kind of where you can go off here, all your choices, and then over here are the same choices. They just look a little bit different. Um, I tend to use both of them, depends where I'm going. Um, but we're going to start off in expenses, which is right here on the main page, and it's also under there. So in here, we see that I currently have one card charge. I have zero expense reports, and I wouldn't pay attention to too much of the approvals. Right now, I feel it's erroneous information. <laughs> But um, my card charge, you can see below, it looks like I have done a subscription to Rodeo News and used my card, cost me $30. My card number ends in 4294. And so um, if you, whenever you do use your P card, it's gonna come through automatically. You need to give it two to three days and then it will show up under expense items under a card charge. Um, if you give it the two to three days and it still doesn't come through, you can usually ask us, but more than likely the vendor's going to want their money. So I think just be patient. Some vendors take longer. They don't run it as often. So um, let's just say I have mileage. I'm going to go somewhere. So I um, have clicked the plus sign and it's create an expense item. And uh, let's say I traveled yesterday, the 16th. And I'm going to pick, we always pick expenses that not do not use. I can't take that out of there. So and then for type, I'm going to go down and find mileage. And it's mileage domestic. Does someone have a question? No? Okay. Sorry, I thought I heard something. So mileage domestic, then a whole bunch of other choices come up. And then um, you just start kind of filling it out. You can search for Laramie, but I just pick Alaska just for ease. But Laramie is in there wherever you want. Oh, okay, so that brings up a question for me that this expense location doesn't have to be set to Laramie. It can be any of any that's of those. irrelevant to okay. Right. So if I if I went on a conference and it's um I would put hotel on my P card. But if I had some mileage for some reason somewhere else, I could pick wherever that location is. You just have to search on it. So just for ease I picked the first one which is in Alaska. Um, end date, uh, let's just say it was a one day mileage reimbursement. And I went to Casper and back, what's it, about 270 miles probably? So guess. And then um, travel. Oh, can't type side miss. Oh, there we go. Travel to, to Casper. Casper. To attend. XXX meeting. You would put as much detail as you can while still spelling correctly is important. <laughs> okay. Um, start location is going to be Laramie. And I'm going to destination Casper. Okay, Kath, can I ask a question here? Mm -hmm. So why, if you're putting in your start location and your destination, why is it important to have in the description that you travel to Casper also? 
it's it's required that you put something in there. Mm -hmm. And really, I would just be comprehensive and say, travel to Casper to attend XX meeting. It's going to be elsewhere, so this is not the only place you'll put it. Um, but it's just to be comprehensive, so they ask fewer questions. Odometer, this you would put in if you weren't using MapQuest. I'm assuming that I went out on MapQuest and looked at Casper return there and return is 270. It's a guess on my part. But if I want, if I like went to a ranch and did something and looked at their crops and then I went to another ranch, I'm not just traveling to Casper. I may have gone 60 more miles because I went to a ranch east of town. So my MapQuest would not cover that. So then I would put starting and ending and I might then get 350 miles but you kind of have to track that a little bit more and have more documentation. My license plates, you always have to put your license plates. And then your account number, I wouldn't play with your account number just because that's where Jolene's gonna come in. She reviews that and how she knows she needs to review it is because there's three nines right there. That means you haven't touched it, you haven't really looked at it, and she needs to. So I wouldn't touch that at all. So then this looks pretty, pretty good. So let's just save and close. And it's thinking hopefully. In here you could also attach your map quest. You can do it in several different places. But if I knew I was using map quest to Casper, I would just print that out and save it as like a, a PDF and then attach it. So then they know exactly where I'm getting my mileage at. It didn't really close. We'll see if it does this time. Okay, so now it's shown up down here is mileage, but it's still zero. Like it's hasn't calculated it at the rate that I get paid. So I'm gonna go down here and say, I'm gonna add this to, I need to highlight it, and I'm gonna add it to a report. University of Wyoming Extension. Once I add it to the report, once it does, it does what I ask, it calculates my mileage. I'm going to get $147.15 from that trip to Casper and back. But until you put it in a report, it won't calculate it. So then I'm going to say um, travel to Casper to attend the next meeting. You can put dates. Um, it's already out there, but it doesn't put more dates. On um, 1 slash 16. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so we've got it in two places. Um, we can also add out here under none. We could have done it on that previous screen or this screen. So if you saved your map quest to a PDF, you could go out here and look for it. We'll just put the circuit evaluation in there as our documentation. One of the things that I have found that's helpful to me is that I set up a separate folder for any WildCloud receipts. And as soon as I get a receipt, whether I have, you know, I've been out to a meal, and they print it off hard copy, I make a copy of it and scan it and send it to myself, and I save it there. Or if I've got an electronic one, I save it there. That way, all of my receipts that I'm going to need for WildCloud are in one place. It makes them very easy to find and get back to. That has just worked really well for me. Um, so since we filled out all of that, we've attached our PDF form, which documents our mileage. Um, there's, I have read and accept this corporate travel and expense policy. I would encourage you to go out and read it so you know what you're being bound to when you travel. It tells you all the ins and outs of travel, what you can do and what you can't do. However, I would encourage you never to select this and hit the word, the submit button. Because see, the submit button is grayed out until you select this, which means you can't submit until you do that. But the reason we have kind of a checks and balances is because we don't want you to ever submit. We want you to just save and then have Jolene submit after she reviews your account string. Because with those 999s, it's going to get um, rejected because no one has looked at it. And so out here, I now have an expense report in progress. And it's that one we were just doing for mileage. And it hasn't been submitted, but at that point, you would tell Jolene, I have expense number 
000-152-41866, ready to submit. Please submit when you're ready. So then she will go out there, and I'll tell you how she gets access in a minute. She goes out there, reviews it. She sees those 999s, and she says, oh, I better review the account string because it's not correct right now. So it's kind of our checks and balances. And somewhere in this documentation, you should put, is it area travel? Is it um, training money from Kim? What is the source of the funds that you're paying for whatever you're paying for it with? That gives Jolene the clue of where she's, what account she's going to put in it and how she's going to track it going forward. So there's uh, places to put that out there in the explanation, in your expense report detail, um, just in the comments. You can put that out in several places. So if I, if I wanted to make sure that Jolene knew, I could just put it up here and say, please charge to area travel. Charge to area travel. Oh, well, only if I can type. Charge to area travel. And then Jolie knows exactly what that means. So she's going to put the correct account number in there and have it charged to the right place. Kath, I have a question. Uh -huh. This is Amber. I don't have my video on. Okay, um, so I turned in one last week and did, uh, Warren helped me because I don't do wild club very much and he does so he helped me through this mm -hmm. and he told me the account number to charge it to and I changed that account number so and I sent oh, Jolene an email and said this is ready to go but I haven't heard anything so is it because I changed that account no not necessarily if you know what account you're going to charge it to I would just put that in the communication when you email her to say it's ready just say I changed the account it should be charged to x just so everyone's on the same page, I would at least communicate that information to her. Okay. And then she'll just verify. Because see, if you guys submitted, you could certainly submit and it comes directly to me for approvals and it doesn't have a stop in between. That means then I have to go out there and make sure everything's charged to the right place. But that's why I, I have Claire and Jolie. I just did save and close, but I did change the account number. So it's and, still- And that's perfect. Okay. That's, that's kind of our checks and balances as to why we make sure that we at least communicate with whoever's going to be changing that or verifying it's the right account. That okay. way they know what's going on because they're actually balancing the accounts behind the scene. And if they're not somehow included, they won't. Okay. So should I maybe email her and let her know that I did change that account? Um, yep. I would do that when okay. you send it or the email that says it's ready to submit. Which I did that last week. Um, and have it, and that's why I was maybe concerned that because I haven't heard anything, so I thought maybe well, I suspect it's because she's been sick. Okay, she was yesterday, but she may not have caught up with all that stuff. Okay, um, we're kind of formulating a um, plan to move forward with other people doing submissions for people in extension, so you'll hear more about that. Okay, okay, so that way we're not just relying on Jolene and we're not putting that pressure on her, too. So Okay, so after we've, we've kind of looked at that, we tell people that it's ready to submit, we need to make sure they can go out and see it. So right here, there's a drop-down box. Right now, it has my name, but I can see all these people's travel. Um, so if, let's pick on Karen, because I know she's in the room. <laughs> well, Kim's here too, but. <laughs> I don't have nearly as many. <laughs> oh, Karen, you have overdue charges. I did not know that before, <laughs> so don't, don't. I'm not picking on you too much, hopefully. But so Karen has, I have access to everything Karen can get to. So I see that she's got some stuff out. She has no expense reports that are ready to submit. But if she did, then I would look out here and say, oh, she just told me this number is ready to submit. So I can submit it on her behalf. I check it and then I'd hit the submit button for her. Um, but that's why we kind of wait for that email. So as you can see, we have access to a lot of people, but I don't have access to these people unless they actually give me access. And you can take it away at any time too. So how you do it, that is this little square box over here. Why Explain why you would want to give people access though. So they could submit it on your behalf. So you... Oh, so I only gave Joel, so I have another question, sorry. I only gave Jolene access, so that, and I did carbon copy that to you, so you can't go in and change that unless you have that access, huh? Correct. So you'll want to go in and add some more delegates. I think it gives you more options when you have more delegates. That's just me. So but these are the people that have my um, access, because I'm seeing mine right now. So any of these people can go in and take care of things for me. So 
the more options you have. So my thought is you guys right now have Jolene. I feel that I'm going to move you and you're going to have Joanna's too. But it might be really good to put all of these people. These are all people that work in my shop that um, once we kind of iron out how things are going to work, any one of these can submit for you. Right now you're just going to Jolene. So um, if we wanted to add someone, I'm going to add Kim just for fun so she can do all my work for me. So you just ha hit the plus sign, type in the name of the person. Oh, you have to be on there. Sorry, I wasn't on there. And it should see all the Kims that you see. And hopefully Kim is in here. Do you see yourself? Nope. Oh, there's more. Oh, I don't really want to search. I'll just find you, Kim. Apparently I can't do your work for you. That's sad. <laughs> Let's search for Kim. I want her to be able to do my work for me. So then all the Kims should hopefully pop up. It might be last name too. I M A. R E A. R E A M A N. You kinda have to search in a few different ways. I guess she's not going to be able to do my work for me, though. It's quite sad. I don't know why that's not working. But you could pick anyone. Like, if I wanted to pick this gal, and then I'd save. And now Kim Andrews can see my stuff. If she was real quick and wanted to look at all my stuff, she could. But I'm going to remove her pretty quick because I don't even know who she is. So Where did you go to do that again? There's a little square box. So let me, let me just I remove think, her. Yeah. They're asking about to get even get into here. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a little score box. Um, save and close this little box right here. It's the square one on the right hand side when you're in expenses. Are you finding it? Yeah, I did find it. Okay, and then it's just manage delegates, and I have to figure out how to get rid of her. <laughs> Clearly, you might not want to add anyone because you might not be able to get rid of them. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Yeah, that one, um, I can get rid of Casey. Inactivate. I don't know about that. Active. Well, I will figure out how to delete her at some point. I can delete everyone else because the X shows up, but I can't really get rid of her. Oh, you know why? I bet because she's not a current employee. 117 of 2018. So there's a lot of information out here. She has to be a current employee, so I, I suspect that I might not be able to remove her, but she won't have access now because she's not valid. But that's only one day, so I don't know. I'll work through that. But that's how you add people. And I would encourage you to add Casey, Joanna, Jolene, and Yepping, which is Claire in my office. Any one of us can take care of this for you. And, and if you have questions, probably add me because then I can see what you're asking about. Otherwise, that would be the first thing I ask you. Well, can you set me as delegate and then I can look. So then when you do that, you just save and close, then you have a delegate. Another thing to look out, out here is to manage bank accounts. If you want to receive electronic deposit into your checking account, it's like it takes usually about two days to get your money versus them mailing it and figuring out where they're gonna mail it to. Because right now, the HR system, which is where you get your automatic deposit for your payroll, does not talk to Wildcloud. So because of that, if you were expecting to get it at the same address, you're not going to get it. They have to actually have a pile of them over in accounts payable and they have to contact you. Where would you want me to send it? So it slows the process substantially. So if you're comfortable with putting your bank account, it's a secure uh, connection. I put mine out here, as you can see, and it honestly doesn't take very long to get your money. So if you want to add one, you just go like this. I'm not going to add a bank account though. <laughs> I'm going to be able to get rid of it. So on your check, if you have questions, it shows you what you've got down here on your routing number. So put your routing number there, your account number is up here, and it shows you where it's on, out on your check. And only the asterisks are required. Account, account type, checking, savings, whatever you want it to go to. The rest of them you don't need, but you do need account number, account type, routing number, and then you save and close. And you can 
call it whatever you want. So that's how you set up your automatic deposit. So when you submit something and you get uh, your delegate to submit it for you, the route is you create it, you put it into an expense report, you let your person that you're delegating to know it's ready, they review it, whoever it ends up being, they change the account number, they do whatever they need to do, they may ask you questions about it if it's not clear or if you don't have your attachments. Once they're done with it and they substantially think they've got everything verified, they hit submit for you. You then get another email back that says, Jolene has just submitted this on your behalf. Do you want to allow it to go into workflow? You have another opportunity to stop it if you want to. If you say yes, at that point, it's then put into the workflow and I get an email that says, it's out here, it needs to be approved. And then I review it for the things that I'm looking at and then approve it and at that point it goes over to accounting and they audit it and they hit it, if everything is good, it's attached, they have no questions, they say submit for payment, and then you can get your payment. I've gotten them in as quick as two days, so it's pretty quick. It has to get through all those little stages, but um, once it gets to accounting and they've been audited, two days for turnaround is not bad. So um, I'll show you kind of what I see when um, I have a list of things that I approve whenever they come in. So I'm looking at the work list over here under tools, work list. You can certainly look at this too and I would encourage you to get into a kind of a practice of looking out there. So um, I see everyone's, you guys will only see your own. So if I go into financials, these are what is pending for me to approve. So it would be just like that if you guys were to submit an expense report, it went through all those uh, kind of security people to submit for you, then I would see something out here for you for an amount. And what I do is like, if I look at Sarah's, I would get it to open. Hopefully in this page, do you have your pop-up blockers? On? Oh, it very well could be. Well, normally it opens in a new page, but I think she's got her pop-up blocker on. So pay attention to that. And then there's a place for me to, um, approve or reject. And if I reject, that means it's gonna come back to you and there's a question and I can write in the comment section what I, why I'm rejecting it. Like if the 999s are still out there, I automatically reject. If you submit without going through Jolene, I automatically reject. And I say, please use your delegate. So it'll have some detail in the comments as to what you need to do next. But that means it's come back to you, you need to do something, then we can resubmit. So I get in the practice of looking at your financials out here in the work list because it can really tell you where things are in the process. If I had a question and we could open these, it would tell you who's approved, who's not approved, what is, who's pending. So you can kind of tell where all your stuff is. You can also look at that on expenses too. Um, usually there'll be some detail down here as to where things are in the system. I think you can look there too. Search. Yeah, so we're seeing Karen's expense reports here. Huh? Um, so it tells the different expense numbers. If you needed to go out and look, tells you when it was paid, what it was paid for. So if you need to ever go back and look and see what you've gotten paid or did I get paid for that, have I submitted it? You can always look at that hourglass and just see what's out there. Some people will have quite a bit, some people not so much. Depends on how much travel you do or what you're being reimbursed for. Um, so if you have a P card charge out here, like Karen has a lot of P card charge, we can lump P card charges together. You just put them in the same expense report and you can um, call it your P card charges for the month or bi-weekly, depends how many you have. Or you can do it one at a time, it doesn't really matter. It's really preference. But it will assign, if you do one at a time, each one of them will have its own unique expense report. And they, if you do multiples in one expense report, it's hard to find that exact charge. So if you knew you had a charge for $30 to the Wyoming Rodeo Association, like I do on mine, and I wanted to find that, but I had lumped it with like five different P-card charges, it'd be more difficult to drill down to see it. So if you're gonna wanna ever go backwards, I would just do one P-card charge per expense report, 
but if you're not going to really worry about it and that you know I did it in the month of January and you know that you submitted that just in January, you probably just have a fewer um, expense reports. So it's really your preference as to how you want to do it. So um, once you guys set up both your delegates and your checking account information, you're then ready to submit any kind of reports that you have or anything like that. It's really easy if you have a mistake to delete things, because I'm going to go delete this because I don't want to get paid for something I didn't do. So I just highlight it, and then I get the X going on back here, and it says, do you want to, to continue? And I say yes. And now it's gone. But not that far, because now it's back here. I have to go back. It's not in an expense anymore, but it is actually a charge out there. And so you have to kind of delete it in two places. Now I'm back to the one card charge, which is I wouldn't, wouldn't want to delete the card charge because that is a true charge that I have to attach a receipt to. So does anybody have any questions about the expense module and how you would do that? <laughs> if you, this is just informative. Uh, you know, if you want to get out there and look at, at more things, you can go under your navigator little hamburger thing and look at your invoices. So I just went to invoices um, right there under payables. And um, say I was going to look all the payments. So I clicked on the little um, hourglass and I want to look all the payments to Kim. Only if I can find her in the system. <laughs> so I go with hourglass again. And I go A M A N and search, see where she's at, if she is here. Maybe I don't exist today, Kim. <laughs> Read about you. We'll search Do I Kim. have to have had submitted something? Yeah. For it to happen? Okay. But I think you did. You've yeah, done but it. they've all, we all been P card reconciliation. Okay, there I am. So she's Kimberly. So it's pretty particular as to how you're searching for things, if that is something that you haven't figured out. Um, so these are P cards, it looks like. Um, and she's got various dates on here, unpaid. So I'm going to guess that these are P cards because there's no unpaid amount or invoice amount because we just paid her. So you can drill down and look at these a little bit farther if you want to. Click on it. Um, but the whole system is open to anything. So if you wanted to find out if a vendor has been paid, this is exactly where you look. Instead of looking for Kim, I look for the vendor name. So you can, it, it, it's really a pretty good system in the fact that you can look anybody, not just the College of Ag. If you wanted to know what, what we were paying to um, Helicopter Air, which is a vendor, we could search that, we'd know what kind of payments the university has paid. Then you could drill down and say, oh, well, who actually did this? So. Anybody has access to all that information. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, and that's the difference between this system and our old system is, um, in PISTOL, I could only look at things that were within the College of Ag, and sometimes that was prohibitive to find out information. This system, they don't have any um, holds on what you can see. It's just a matter of your time to go and dig it up. So, any questions about that? It's just that was just informative. I suspect many of you won't look at that. <laughs> so, does everybody feel confident that they can submit an expense report now? Better than before. Well, and if you have any problems, any one of those four people can help you with the probably exception of Casey. She hasn't gotten really familiar with it yet. I, I, it's something, my goal for the future for her. Okay. The, all the other people could help you um, submit and get them ready. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else out there that would be really, you, could, you can certainly play around in these Does areas. anybody have any questions about how to reconcile a, a P card? Um, I muted everybody when because there was some background noise, so you'll have to take yourself off mute if you want to say yes or type in the chat box or if that's something that would be of interest to you. So um, while you guys are thinking, uh, if you so say I use my P card charge or P card, I did use it, so I have a thirty dollars charge out there. 
So um, let's just go ahead and get this ready for payment. So I've put a little bit more information in there already. So I clicked on it. So it was on 1220. It was an expense. It's a P card charge. Um, expense location, they're located in Colorado. I think that automatically populated. Um, it's $30 and it was an ad for a rodeo coach. Then um, after I got all that typed in, I would go ahead and itemize. And it's advertising and promotional. This is a drop down menu. You pick whatever you want. So I already picked that. The date auto populated and I had to put $30 in for the amount. And I type it in the same thing again, add for rodeo coach, online posting, $30. And then I, since I kind of know my accounts, I changed it already. So, but I still don't submit on my behalf. Like I could, but my problem when I submit, it goes directly to the Dean and it, it's not good for that to go hit to him. He has too many things to do. So I still have someone submit for me because then I see my own charge again and it doesn't bother as a dean. So that it kind of puts a level in between. So basically I already put all this information in here and everything is good. So I'm going to save. Hey, Kath, I have a question for you on mm -hmm. the expense code. So I go in and change that 999 to the 315. Do you want me not to do that? Um, I, we're okay. As long as you know that Jolene is going to submit it for you. It's kind of our way of knowing that it hasn't been changed. But if you're going to change it, I would just make sure that when you emailed her, you can just say, and I already changed that. She's going to change it to the 315 anyway, because that's okay. all extension. Okay. Um, so I'm back at the main screen. Um, and the reason I haven't submitted this yet is because I don't have a receipt from these people yet. Um, so I haven't submitted it because of that, but I'm going to, I highlighted it. So it's now blue. I'm going to add it to a report. So now I have an, a report that I've created. Um, add for radio coach. And um, it up here, it says payment method electronic. I would leave that um, unless you want to get a check or we're not currently doing wires. But since this is P-Card, I'm not going to get paid anyway because it says employer pays me zero. Employer pays the card $30, which is the way it should be. So I would just kind of look at that and make sure it seems right because we had a problem in the beginning that P-Card charges were being paid to people, but it was a new system. Now it's kind of worked out. So, um, then I would go ahead, everything's on here. I'm not gonna click this because I'm gonna let Jolene do that. The only thing I don't have, which pretend I do, I have a copy of my receipt, but it's not there. So I go ahead and hit save, and it just created an expense report number for me for $30. So now um, I'm going to hit cancel and go back to the main screen. So instead of my expense item be over here, I now have it in report. So whenever I'm, I get that receipt and I attach it, I can tell Jolene or Claire, this is more of a Claire thing because it's the Dean's money, that this expense number is ready to submit. And she'll go out there and look at it and say, oh, I can submit that because she sent me the email. I've verified the number. It's ready to go. So when you email Jolene, um, in our instance with extension expense or P-card reconciliations, the important things to include are this expense number that's been generated here, and if you know the source of the funds that are being used to pay right. the expense of the P-card. And the reason you want to put that expense number in there is because what if you have five in there and you are only wanting to submit one and the other four were still in progress? She wouldn't know that. So I'd be really specific in that. Um, like I only have one, so it's going to be pretty obvious that one's ready to submit, but I get in the habit of putting the expense number on there and putting the source of funds in there too. Okay. Okay. It's actually a really good system once you get in and start using it. Um, I, I know that it may seem cumbersome, but once you get in the habit of using it, I really do like it. And I think when the bugs are worked out, it's going to be a good system for us. I feel it's going to be at least a year away, though. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of tips that Ann shared with me early on when I was just doing my first, first one is that where you put information in that purpose um, field, and, and Kath put in, it was a travel to Casper for XXX meeting, that 
if you put in, you could even put in your, the account that's paying for that in that spot and then copy that because you put that in several different places too. And then all you have to do is paste it rather than retyping it each time. That way, you know, the information is going to be the same each time it asks for a purpose. And the other thing, and you may have discovered this already that, um, can you go back to where it has the save and submit and mm -hmm. the, the, First time that I saw this, it made me a little bit nervous because that cancel button on the top right hand side actually just takes you back to the last page. It doesn't cancel anything. I was afraid to touch it because I thought it was going to cancel everything I had done. Yeah, you have to do the X's and I had to do the X's in two places yeah, to get rid yeah. of it. So. so know that if you want to go back to a previous screen, all you have to do is hit the cancel button. Well, think about that cancel button is kind of a back button. Mm -hmm. I did not know that about not checking the I have read and accept the corporate travel and expense policies, though. And I think that was exact mistake I made last time. Everybody it does rejected. it once, um, <laughs> and I reject at least everybody once. So don't feel bad when you do it. But that really then makes it so you can submit. So if you unclick that, the submit button goes away. Right. So it's the only way you could submit it. So that's why I put high order of telling you guys don't do that, but go out and read this. You know, it's a whole manual. Um, it's going to ask me to save it first. Can I put it on your desktop? Yeah, fine. And then if we go out there and look at it, uh, is this one? No, no, it hasn't saved yet. No, it's a, I don't know what that is. That, that I think is new. So maybe it is that kind. Oh, no, not that. Well, it did ask me to save. Mine asked me to open it. So you can't just open it and read it. You have to save it somewhere in order to open it. I guess so. Okay. Yeah, let's just see that again and see what it says. Oh, you're using Chrome. Okay. Sorry. Let's see what it is. Travel policy. Oh, here. It's here. Oh, maybe it just took longer to download. So where is it? Oh, here. Ah. So it tells you everything about all of the travel policies for the university. And really, honestly, everybody who travels should be reading this. And they make it so easy to find now, you know, uh, from travel advances to, you know, when a, a traveler is required to official breakfast, lunch, and dinner held at the community. You know, it tells you everything you need to know. Mileage, 45 miles. They tr They really don't like to reimburse um, one day in Cheyenne. We knew that we can kind of get away with it because Cheyenne's 49 miles away. So they don't usually give us too much of an issue, but here's all the per diem, things like that. We also, we should touch on per diem. Um, we have a per diem calculator and I will send that to Kim and then Kim can forward it out to you guys. I didn't think about bringing it here, but basically it's just a one-stop shop that puts everything on one Excel page to put down what you're requesting in per diem. So whatever you're requesting in per diem for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you had one meal provided, you subtract lunch. And we have it all on there, so it's real easy. Oh, do you have it? Oh, okay, awesome. Kim's going to bring it up for us. Oh, I think it's actually out on the um, extension people page. The website, okay. Yeah, yeah, I did have them put it I, out I did put it under new employees because I, I shared it with Shaylee. Um, oh, okay, good. It's an Excel. Resources. There we go. Yeah. So um, basically, we just put this together. The university um, only really has this part right here, first, last, location, rate, total. We put in all this stuff because you were constantly, we were constantly having to go to the MI and E rates table, which we do have a link to, and you can look up other states, but since primarily our travel's in Wyoming, sometimes out, but this gives us everything Wyoming. So we kind of know, if we're traveling to Cody, Park County, it's $64. So let's just put that in there and say, um, our first date was, uh, 1 slash 11 slash 8, the date, 1 slash 12 slash 18, and then we go down and put the last day, because you want the first and last day are at 75% um, per diem rate, so let's go 1 slash 13 slash 18, and I'm making up these dates, so 
Um, and location, I'm going to Cody just because we talked about that. So you just type in where you're at all three days, just in case you go Cody and then to Thermopolis. You can be in different places, but we stayed in Cody. And so $64. Is Show them where you got the 64 from. $64, Cody right here. Okay. $64. And um, all, no meals were provided that day. I was just driving to Cody all day. So I'm actually going to get $48 for that per diem for me to travel to Cody because um, they always think that maybe you have breakfast at your house before you leave. And this is their easy way of figuring it out. So you're allowed 64, but our policy says you get 75% of first and last day at 75%. So let's just say they didn't provide any meals. I had to buy all my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm going to put $64 in there and I'm going to get all 64. So in my per diem, under my expenses, I would put $112. And it would be under per diem domestic. You haven't done your last one, you'll go yet, your last day. Oh, sorry. Last day, $160 makes a difference. So that one's at 75% too. So I would put $160 in under per diem, and that would be what I get for that per diem. But just let's say on this day, I went to a conference and they provided me lunch. I would look at this and say, okay, my rate is 64. They provided me lunch, so I need to take $16 off of there. So what would be that be 38? 38 plus 16? I don't know. Well, there's an easy way to go around it. Yes. 16. So I would get $48 for that. So, so if they provide a meal, you just take off the amount that you would be allowed for the per diem from the total. Yes. So I would take the $16. If I was provided breakfast and lunch at this conference, I would take $30 off 64. Okay. So I would get $34 then. Okay. So that's how you, and so then um, when you're ready to submit this, you need this as backup documentation that you're going to attach to your, your payment request. So I would save as, a PDF wherever you're going to save it and then attach it when it's on the PDF so and I would do that for each trip and the the use of per diem is relatively new within the last few months when it's only been per diem because we used to be able to submit individual, exact individual receipts. receipts and we can no longer do that for these, those of you who have been used to doing that it's all per diem now so except one day travel if you're traveling, say I'm going over to Cheyenne to attend a meeting and it goes over, spans over lunch, I cannot ask for per diem for one day where I'm going to come back to Laramie that night. I have to keep my receipt because it's a one day travel. So in that case, I would scan the receipt in and attach it and pay actual expenses. Now, if that happens, does an employee need to stay within these M and IE breakdown, those totals? So like if they go to lunch, they have to stay under $15, $15 or under, because that's... No. Okay. Although I think that you might be scrutinized by Glenn and Mary Kay and Kelly, should you go over that? I think that's a reasonable number. Um, if you are hosting, um, like say there were three people and you want, there was a business purpose, it can't be three university people unless there's a strong university business purpose. Usually it has to be someone from the outside that you're taking to lunch to discuss whatever initiative or whatever you've got going on. And you would keep your receipt. Um, you can not ever um, reimburse alcoholic beverages. Those have to be on your own dollar. So you could put that business lunch on your P-card, but you could not put the alcohol on your P-card. Because at, at that point, if I find alcohol on the P-card, I'm gonna ask you to go back to the vendor credit it back or write me a check to deposit it back. It's just kind of a pain. So alcohol, always off limits. But if you were gonna pay it on your personal visa, you could put it on your personal visa and have one bill, but when you submitted your bill, you would subtract off the alcoholic beverages. Because we, as a, as a college, we'll never pay for your alcohol. That's very... <laughs> So business purpose, more than one person. Um, uh, usually there's an outside person from the community or wherever you're meeting with. You can't just say, Kim, I'm going to take you to lunch and there's a business purpose. It just wouldn't work that way.
So that's how the per diem works. Um, we have tried to make it a little bit easier for you guys to calculate, but say you went to Denver. Denver is not on here. At that point, you have to click on the MIE rate. Oh, and Kim has an error, but it's coming up, which is good. Select a state and say I went to Colorado and it looks Denver. And I'm going to type in Denver here. And it says find rates. So Denver is going to be right here. It's $69. So I would then go back to this um, per diem calculator knowing it's $69. And I would use this one for Denver. So that's what um, we would get. So then I type in Denver here. And Denver. And then change all these to $69. It costs a little bit more to go there. And say I provided all my meals and so nothing was provided. And usually if you go to a conference, we request that the conference agenda is attached for documentation. Because a lot of time conferences will provide lunches so then everybody kind of stays and they don't leave and not come back. So they do provide lunches. So we need a conference agenda attached if you're attending a conference. So in this case, I would request $172.50 for my per diem. Any questions about how to use this per diem calculator? <laughs> and this, uh, if you ever lose it, is out on the CES employee site. I had them update this. Um, should be able to go out there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And under the A to Z directory, and I think it's under extension. Goodness, all without oh, my glasses. Yeah. You can do the extension. That. I've just got a bookmark oh. too. And it should be down here under uh, log on, okay. employee login. And then um, travel policy and re reimbursement. Let's see if she updated. I asked her to, so I'm hoping she did. Um, Per diem calculator, okay. right there. So let's see what it looks like. Now you have to save it again. Oh, darn. I guess we'll save it to your desktop. You'll have to clean up after me, Kim. Mm -hmm. And then let's close this. Close this. Let's see, per diem calculator. Yep, so it is that one out there. So you can do the employee login and then get to it. So, does anybody have any questions about the Fusion uh, expense report module or anything like that? Travel? Feel free to call anytime. I do try to answer my phone. Emails are good. Okay. Especially when you're doing your first one, Shaylee. Yeah. I'm to walk you through mm -hmm. it. and You can try. Just You're not, you're not going to hurt anything, but if you don't submit it, just play with it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions that Kath could answer for you today? I don't think so. Well, if you think of any, just email. Okay. I will. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks again to Kath for providing yeah. us. Thank you a lot. That helped a lot. <laughs> good. Yes. Yes. Very good. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And then we will see you um, all later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.